This is a Mac Pro in all of its beefy original generation glory. And once again, a certain Tim Cook wants you to think that it's totally obsolete. That's why today we're sticking it to the man and installing an RTX 2070 Super in this thing and powering it in the dumbest way possible. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy fighting the scourge that is planned obsolescence, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. So this is a 2009 Mac Pro, affectionately known as a cheese grater. I have no idea why. And they are amongst the most beloved computers that Apple ever released. And for good reason. It's good looking solid hardware with great specs and almost infinite expandability. Although Apple stopped supporting this gorgeous piece of hardware with new operating systems since 2019's Catalina, there's been a devoted group of people who work to get each new macOS release going on this thing with tools like OpenCore. Unfortunately, with the transition away from Intel, that time is drawing to an end, unless you install Linux on it. In which case, this machine is an absolute beast for years to come. Mine here is a 4,1 that I picked up on Facebook Marketplace last week for 100 bucks, which is an absolute bargain considering the specs. This early 2009 model was kitted out with dual Xeon X5550 CPUs clocking in a total of 8 cores, 16 threads at 2.66 gigahertz. Mine's been flashed to 5,1 firmware. Mine still had a spinning hard drive in it, so I swapped that with a SATA SSD and a nice 3D printed bracket that I'll link down below. So the only thing really holding this machine back now is the video card. It's a GeForce 9500 GT. Nice card in 2008, not so nice in 2024 with 512 megs of VRAM. Especially if I want to use this Mac Pro for something modern and useful like, say, as my Twitch streaming machine, encoding video in OBS. Which is why when I upgraded my gaming PC to a 4070, I figured, hey, let's see if my old 2070 Super will work in this brand new 15 year old Mac Pro. And a quick search seems to say that it's possible. Now the Mac Pro can provide some PCIe power to video cards with these two headers on the motherboard, but sources seem to vary on how much power these motherboard connectors can actually provide. Some people like to do a pretty clever mod called Pixless to physically tap into more power and divert it to a graphics card, but that's far too classy here for Action Retro, and I just so happen to have this mid-2000s dedicated drive bay graphics card power supply, which is a ridiculous thing that actually used to exist. And this delightfully janky solution provides an extra 450 watts of power. But before we get too deep into the jank, let's do a nice minty fresh Ubuntu install. And we'll be installing the latest version of Ubuntu 2404, which should run phenomenally on this machine. Yep, boot it into the live environment and installer just fine. But let's do a quick test and just make sure we're connected to the internet. Patreon.com slash action retro. Yep, there we are, connected to the internet. Yeah, it's my cats. All right, I'm gonna breeze through this install, and if anything interesting happens, I'll stop, but otherwise, jump cut to being complete. And yep, install complete. No mess, no fuss. Obligatory Neo fetch. Showing our Mac Pro 5,1 running Ubuntu 2404, our Xeon X5550 16 threads, and our paltry GeForce 9500 GT. We'll go ahead and grab Steam right from the software center. The long dark might launch on this 512 megabyte VRAM video card. Yeah, it's launching, but it's not happy. <laughs> All right, well, surprisingly, we did actually get into the game, although it doesn't look that good. And we are getting about one frame per second. So yeah, that's enough of that. All right, it's time to get weird. And <laughs> this should be pretty straightforward. All I'm gonna do is pop out 
the old video card here. Chuck in our new guy. And then the way this drive bay power supply works is pretty cool. There is, well, connectors for your video card, of course. But this thing knows when to turn on because it has this connected to power in the computer, like a Molex connector, or in our case, we're gonna have to use a SATA adapter. But once this detects power, it immediately turns this power supply on, powering the video card with 450 watts. That's pretty cool. And to test it, we'll just gracefully plop it right on the top here. And there is SATA power inside this drive bay. So we'll plug it in there for its power on detection. And then we'll plug in video card power. Of course, now we have two plugs for our Mac Pro, but that's okay. I like jank. And I'll just use an HDMI to DVI adapter here so we can still use our awesome cinema display. And here we are, first power on of the Tower of Jank. Graphics card lit up. Power light is on, on our drive bay power supply. We probably won't get a startup screen because the Mac is not expecting this video card, which is like 12 years its junior. Oh, we are getting some display actually. Hey, look at that. <laughs> Worked first try. Now I'm not too surprised actually because I saw some pictures online of someone who shoved a 2070 into a Mac Pro and it sort of worked in Mac OS, although drivers weren't there and the frame rate was very bad and stuff. But yeah, here in Ubuntu, we do have the drivers and we booted right in. When was the last time something just worked first try on this channel? Don't answer that question because it's probably never. Uh, let's see here. We need to go into drivers because I want to get the official NVIDIA drivers going on here. Yeah, let's get the latest NVIDIA driver meta package. Version 535. All right, we are back to the desktop, but I noticed something weird, which uh, we need to experiment here a little bit. It didn't show me the login screen, but I hit enter, typed in my password and got to the desktop here. Let's do a quick Neo fetch for good measure. <laughs> yes, look at that. We are a Mac Pro 5.1 running Ubuntu 2404 with a GeForce RTX 20 Super. But let's do a quick uh, reboot here and see if we have that issue again. And now we're in actually the login screen, but it's not visible. So if I uh, hit enter and type in my password, hmm, let's try a slightly older version of the driver. All right, we're gonna use driver 470 and see if we get a login screen now. Okay, so it didn't make any difference, same issue. And it seems like the screen is a little bit teary under this uh, 470 driver. So I'm switching back to 535. Okay, well, still no login screen, but you know what? I'm gonna call that a security feature and just live with it because this is the tower of jank. But let's de-jankify this a little bit and <laughs> try to clean up this tower. So I'd like to try and mount this power supply in here, which uh, I think is gonna fit just fine, almost. Yeah, it's fine. I think I'm gonna need to take this weird front bit off because it's not going to fit otherwise. I'm just gonna pop this top cover off and see if we can't easily remove this front Vision Tech thing. Oh, well, look at that. It's actually pretty clean in there. And looks like this front bit comes off. 
with just some screws. That looks way cooler like that anyway. Get in there. Random screws I had lying around. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It's gonna suck air in through the front. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I put that cheese grater finish to good use. And then slide back in here. And I need to figure out some way to route these cables up. It's kind of solid up there actually. Okay, so after a bunch of digging around in here, I removed this uh, plate from the back here where the power supply connects to the motherboard. I was really hoping there would be some way to snake these cables up and back there, but there isn't. There isn't a good way even to like bend stuff out of the way. I mean, maybe underneath the power supply, but I think the best option really would be just freaking drilling a hole in this floor here. I'm not opposed to that, but I'm not gonna do that right now. For now, I think we're just gonna run this without the door and we'll call that a feature. We'll say it's for uh, cooling, even though it's technically worse for cooling because this is designed for a specific airflow. We're not gonna talk about that. We're just gonna do it and we're just gonna have fun. Oh yeah, Tower of Jank is looking real classy now. <laughs> But all that matters is that it works, right? It's not stupid if it works, even if it's stupid. Oh yeah, she chimed. Do our invisible login here. Oh yeah, the Tower of Jank is pleased. Let's start up some game so we can see the difference, which should be hilarious. Uh, we need to add some drivers for steam here. Hang on a second. Oh yeah, the long dark seems much happier now. As you would expect going from this graphics card to a 2070 Super. Ooh yeah, buttery smooth. Look at this. All right, well. Graphics card is working correctly, we can confirm. Oh my God, this thing is running The Outer Worlds, a modern AAA title. When this computer was new, Fallout 3 had just come out. What are we doing buying new computers when 15 year old computers can do things just fine? I mean, look at this. This is awesome. Uh, ow, I just fell and hurt myself. This game looks incredible on here. There's a little bit of stuttering. But man, if we maxed out the CPU in this machine with like an extra gigahertz per core, ah, just imagine how good this would run. Hi Parvati, you're my favorite. Yeah, I am quite pleased with how this computer came out. I mean, it is kind of unbelievably fast for how old it is with this, you know, of course, very modern video card in it. And I wanna upgrade this thing even further because my plan for this is using it as a Twitch streaming PC. And I know other people who use this same computer with worse video cards in it to stream to YouTube and Twitch and it works great. So yeah, I guess the moral of the story today is that these old Mac Pros can be a really great find. You can get them for real cheap because people are basically abandoning them since Apple has transitioned away from Intel and these probably won't see a new Mac OS, but there's so much life left in these machines. They were so overbuilt when they were new and they're just, Cool. And yeah, I think I'm gonna go all the way with this thing. I'm gonna order a big brick of RAM and uh, some new processors for it. And we'll get this thing as powerful as it can possibly be. And I really think that this can be my Twitch streaming machine. In any event, if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more shenanigans like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching.
And a special thanks to Alex Hoffman, Andrew Nicholson, April White, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Control Alt Reese, Drew Hamlin, Frodo Jedi, Gaspar Heller, George Rosansky, Graham, Greg from Hrut K Mods, James Fryman, James Lawry, Jason Papaz, Jason Ezel, Camille Rakowski, Lyle Truid, Matthew Crowall, Nick Daniels, Paul Spencer, Ryan, Scott Cedarbaum, Scott Thompson, Tom Woodfin, Unknown Soldier 41, Veronica Explains, and Xantronics and Industrial, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.